morning and welcome to this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity's Eucharist service. Today we continue the farming metaphor as we will be looking at wheat and weeds. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We shall start our morning's worship as we sing the opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty King of Creation. Lord be with you and also with you welcome everyone and welcome especially to our young children joining us this morning as i always do there there are materials on the website which you can access and for others you can also follow up by logging to the website and joining in the order of service let us start by saying a prayer preparation Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collects for the Sixth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first scriptural lesson is taken from Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And it's if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not for its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage, to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Here the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He puts before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But when, while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the weeds and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did this weed come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? 
But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the weeds along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the weeds into my burn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all cause of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's something about me that you might not know. I love to see beautiful and well manicured gardens. But at least that's where my dealings or love with gardens really end. I am not a handsome gardener by any means at all. All the gardening I do now and again, it's to weed out the unpleasant weeds in my garden. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who might think that Jesus, his parable today, can be really strange. We just don't get it. Why should we not weed out the unwanted weeds from our beautiful gardens? Last Sunday, a gospel reading, we had the parable of the sower. This Sunday, the farming metaphor continues as Jesus tells another parable about a farmer sowing seeds. Here the farmer sows good seeds on good soil, but a rival sneaks in while nobody is looking and plants bad seeds among the good seeds. This causes weeds to grow among the good crop, but rather pulling up the weeds straight away and run the risk of damaging the good crop, the farmer chooses to wait until the plants have fully grown before pulling them up so that he can then separate the weeds from the weeds. This story raises many questions. What does it mean? What do the weeds stand for? Who is the enemy? And why not judge good from bad by weeding the wheat field the same way many of us weed a flower and vegetable gardens. This parable is seen by many as an example of God's judgment on the world at the second coming, which to a great extent it is. But it is a lesson teaching us that we need to be patient when we see bad things around us. It's easy to ask why God doesn't intervene to stop it from happening. We think of the current pandemic, all the thousands of lives lost, jobs, businesses all folding, terrorist attacks, young and indiscriminate killings of young people. In this parable, Jesus is again teaching and giving us rules requisite for his kingdom. Be patient with those you walk and live with. Treat people with kindness, fairness, gentleness. 
tolerate each other, even those who are mean and unkind to you. One of the most intriguing aspects of this parable is that the owner telling his servants not to go through the field, cutting out those they thought were weeds. That is a pretty dangerous action. But another important aspect I take from this parable, and one that I want you to take with you, is to let God do the work of discerning who are his and who are not. Not only is not, it is not our role, but we don't have all the tools for the job. A worker in God's field has to adopt a position of vigilant toleration, empathy, patience and alertness that watches like a shepherd over God's people and teaches from the Bible along with gentle oversight. Jesus' message is that the seedlings of goodness may have to grow in the same field with weeds of selfishness, but those seedlings will eventually yield a huge harvest. In the parable, the weeds do not threaten the wheat, but instead the threat comes from how we react to the weeds. Finally, our gospel teaches that God sees us at our best and worst. When we are filled with weeds as well as wheat, yet never rejects us, loving us totally for the messy tangled gardens we are. Our mission is to resist being choked by the weeds near us, to spread the good news of God's mercy that we've received to everyone, not just those we think are worth the effort, but especially to so-called sinners, outcasts, untouchables, the marginalized, or desperately needed. We must not reject the unlovely and the unlivable. We are to love them into holiness. We are to plant seeds of goodwill and kindness everywhere we can and nurture every glimmer of goodness wherever we find it. And so the key is that it is God's prerogative, not man's, to separate bad from good. That is a wonderful and comforting truth because God judges in perfect righteousness and in his time. So as Christians, we all have a duty to help alleviate suffering in whatever way we can. And we pray that God will give us the strength and guidance so to do. But in the long term, we need to be patient and to trust God to do the right thing. Amen. Let us now declare our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, with crops in the fields ready for harvest, we praise you for being such an amazing farmer, for casting your seed far and wide without regard 
in where it might land or how it might be received. We praise you for your love, your willingness to forgive, your desire to see all people made whole. May we reflect that love in our lives, in growing your kingdom wherever we go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we praise you for being such powerful seed, for growing and producing such abundant fruit among those who not only receive you with joy, but who in faithfulness continue to listen to you, to you once you have taken root in them. Help us, Lord, to have the ears to hear and the will to do what you want us to do and to hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for farmers around the world who struggle to raise their crop, that the world may be fed, that they may make a living. We pray for those countries where working the land is a laborious and fruitless task. We hold before you our concerns in this world for the hungry and thirsty, for those in war-torn areas, for the abused, the vulnerable, and for those who feel they have no hope in world, in the world still affected by COVID-19, who find themselves in the thickets and thistles and who seek a way out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers for those of our family, our church, our community, and our world that you have put upon our hearts this past week and on this day. We pray for those who have died and those whose anniversaries are this week, for all who are bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that we might hear and in hearing become sowers of your word, a people who produce abundant fruits, both now and forever. We ask your presence and guidance in all that this week brings. Merciful Father, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. you. Peace with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, given him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Therefore, through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
We proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant us by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, who remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this a sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you, earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and, and honour and, and, and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as a Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep in eternal life. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on, your, on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer of communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be our living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit 
to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. So now sing a closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. remind you that the church is opened for silent prayer on Tuesdays and Saturdays, um, just in bottles by the way, um, Tuesdays 10 to 11 a.m. and on Saturdays 10 to 11 a.m. At the moment and for now St. Mark's will be closed but we can all move to St. Bottles where we can all say our prayers. Please also Go onto the website and um, get the pew sheets. There are lots of information there um, about reopening and guidance in everything that is happening. Please bow your heads for the blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love. Defend you in every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and all those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.